You're watching Rock Titan TV, featuring legendary Club Lamar DJ, Alex Kane. Rock Titan Nation, we have a very special guest with us tonight. This is someone that I've actually been trying to get a hold of for years. I actually brought this guy down to Philadelphia from New York City. And of course, me being the douchebag that I am, I couldn't get him. You know, I, I couldn't be there in person. But here he is. He's rocking the place out. We've got the legendary DJ, Alex Kane. Alex, how you yeah. doing, man? Yeah, what's up, man? Scott, it's wonderful to be here at Rock Titan Television. Dude, Alex, I'll tell you what, man. I am honored and I am privileged to have you with us tonight. Um, we've been friends for years, man. Friends, virtual friends. And, of course, this yeah. is the first time that we've actually had a chance to catch up in person. But, uh, you know, I mean, there's so many people out there today that I think they have this misperception of what a DJ is versus, oh, yeah. you know, who the man, you know, the legend that is DJ Alex Kane is. Uh, because, you know, people think of that uh, traditional wedding DJ. They think of the typical club, uh, you know, electric music DJ. And then yeah. here you are, here you are, Alex Kane, the man that so many people don't even know that if it were not for you personally up there in New York City, there are some amazing metal bands that people may never, never have even heard about if it were not for you. I mean, you brought so many people to New York City at the legendary Club Lamore. Yeah, it, it was a lot of fun, and well, I was I was just very fortunate to be there at, uh, at the right place at the right time. Uh, back then, um, the new wave of British heavy metal had just been starting to kind of sprout up. Well, you know, it, it's funny. It's funny that you brought that up because I just recently uh, I touched base with a few different record labels over in Europe, and it was the very first time that I had a chance to really get a grasp of this British wave of new heavy metal. And there's so much talent over there. And they really gave birth to what we know in the United States as heavy metal today. But here you are, Alex Kane, DJ Alex Kane. You've been out there at the forefront of all of it. I mean, you brought these guys in, these guys that were, you know, adopting this, uh, this style. Of metal, you know, and you picked up on it, you know, I mean, you had guys like Iron Maiden, Metallica, the list goes on and on and on of people that yeah. you brought to New York City, you know, the hub of all entertainment worldwide, and you're the guy, you're the guy, you're the guy over there at Club Lamore. so talk to me a little bit, talk to me, talk to me, talk to, talk to the audience of just what you feel the impact you brought to the metal scene as it was birthed into the 80s man because you you've had this impact that people really don't appreciate man well you know i've always been sort of like the underground kind of you know in the trenches kind of guy uh, presenting the songs uh, you know presenting the bands to the, to the crowd and, right uh, Really, the bands are the guys that do all the work, and I'm, I'm really just sort of a presenter. And, and uh, oh, come on, man! I, come I, on, I do, man! You're you're not doing yourself I justice. Do to, I do try to filter out, you know, the bad stuff from the good stuff. I mean, if there's stuff I don't like, it never makes it to my right. table. All right, all right. So, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, but back in the old days, um, there was no internet. There, were, there were no, I don't. There weren't even beepers. There weren't. There, there was nothing. It was sure. word of mouth. Uh, you had to walk 15 miles to find a telephone booth and you had to put you know, a whole pocket full of change in it to call somebody and talk to someone. It was a very different world Yeah. Uh, back then. And you had to get your information sort of either by word of mouth or you went to the record store and you rifled through the crates and you, and you, you, you saw an album cover like, say, I Baby Killers that was like off the hook and you were like, oh, I got I to gotta check this band out. <laughs> or, 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 you, or you made pen pals through magazines like Kerrang! and Right. and all of those guys back in the day. Right. Uh, and you spoke to other metalheads from like Sweden and Finland and you would 
change bands and ideas right. and all kinds of stuff like that. But uh, there, there was a big pen pal thing going on. There was a big underground trading thing going on. Um, and my my role in that in that part of the time capsule was to was to play stuff that nobody had heard yet, and it was, was to was to bust open some of the brand new metal that, that was you know just bubbling and boiling underneath the surface. Right. So um, you know, we premiered some. We premiered some really great bands. We premiered Metallica at the club. Man, uh, back in nineteen eighty three. Unreal, uh, dude. Unreal. Yeah, you know, we had a uh, Raven and Anthrax and those guys. Anvil back in early eighty two, eighty three. Oh my when god. When the scene first started to turn. Oh my god, was- dude, guys. I mean, again, you're watching DJ Alex Kane. This guy is a legend. I mean, you don't even appreciate what the whole idea of a DJ is because of the era that you grew up in. I mean, this is a yeah, man that you literally thing. owe all of your knowledge to heavy metal and hard rock to. Honest to God, Alex, I mean, you know, you're talking that's, about the that's, types of things that you went they, through. Just, yeah, I mean, you're talking about the things know, that you went through. In Brooklyn is more where my sort of core base was and then by extension you know the, the five boroughs and then and then the tri-state area we had yeah. people coming more from as far away as Baltimore and Boston and Vermont and Maine and stuff like that but back then we were one of the only clubs within the first 500 mile radius that was doing metal as far back as 1980 and there was uh, no one else there know, were no other players in the game yeah, and it was uh, you know it was a team of us. It wasn't just me. Uh, the owners uh, played a huge part. Um, there was uh, a couple of booking agents that were integral to getting some of the big bands as well. And so, uh, you know, there was a team of us there. Uh, the club owners had really good ears. Um, I I always threw my ears, and uh, what we would do on on the weekends um, uh, during the week, rather when the bands. Uh, would come in on like a Sunday afternoon and we'd have them all audition and then we would just sift through all the bands. And uh, back then, it wasn't about getting bodies in the door and it wasn't about pay to play. There was really no such right. thing as a pay to play scheme. Sure. Uh, that came about much later on and the whole scene sort of changed. But before then, we were all about quality. Uh, right. The bands had to be uh, polished, professional, tight, and they had to sound good. And if you didn't sound good, you never made it to the Lamore stage. Um, and you might as well just break up and, you know, start your career as a club or whatever. <laughs> you know, oh. so we filtered out the bad bands from the good bands. We brought all the good bands in because the club's policy sort of, it was unwritten policy that whenever you came there, you heard a fantastic band and you saw a fantastic show. Yeah. Whether you knew who the band was or not didn't make a difference. Right. So, Right. Well, you know, nowadays it's just about, okay, well, uh, you know, how many tickets can you sell? We don't give a fuck how you sound. Sure. You know? and, and you got bands on the stage that their girlfriends don't even come to see them play. Dude. Uh, and you have to sit through three or four hours of torture to get to the headline. <laughs> it's a whole different world. <laughs> it really is. Pull no punches. Pull no punches. DJ Alex Kane, you know, I mean, you know, if you got to suffer through torture, you got to suffer through torture. But, I mean, you know, one of the things that, that's amazing to me is, you know, when you really were giving rise to the metal bands, the hard rock, and all that stuff that was coming through New York City at that time in the early 80s, it's right around the same time that we had music television. It was like the birth of MTV that Rock Titan is trying to resurrect right now. And, uh, I mean, what I guess are some of your thoughts? What were you thinking for yourself? Personally, because again, you know, you're a traditionalist, you know, you're listening to all these bands, you're seeing these bands in person, you know, which a lot of people didn't have a chance to do. And all of a sudden, there's this birth of uh, video television. What were some of your thoughts about music TV when it first came out? Because it featured all the bands that here you are, you're saying, yeah, this is a band that's good enough to be in Lamar. Uh, and now all of a sudden they're on television. Yeah, um, the, the, the thing that happened there was, was, was kind of weird. Um, when MTV was born, I'm not really sure what year it was, I mean, 1983 or something like that. Yeah, yeah, right around the time where you were in your heyday in New York City, yeah? Somewhere around there. Um, and um, what happened was, and MTV back then actually played music videos. They didn't right. have 576,000 
dopey reality show going on. One sure, the sure. They're kind of yeah. getting nauseous after the first 15 minutes, but right. they play, actually played music videos, and basically really what they were was a visual radio station. Right. More, more or less. And, you know, that whole thing about video killing the radio star the first time they, they played, that was the first video they aired right. on MTV. They sure. were so right about that for a while because what happened was radio was no longer the dictator of what was going to happen. Right. Radio began began following MTV. MTV right. was where you went first. First you had to get a video on television, then you got your song played on the radio. Right. Before MTV, yeah. you, know, the around, you had to go to radio and you had to, you know, play bar or steal, whatever you had to do to get your records played. Uh, and when MTV happened, it just the, the spotlight just sort of swung to that direction. Right. Everybody had to make a video. Right. And, and you made the video first and you released that before the single came out. So it's, it's kind of a, a very um, strange twist of events. Yeah, no, definitely. And I mean, obviously, Lamar, which is where you had your residency for so many years, and, uh, you know, I mean, they are recognized as bringing so many of the, the bands that we know today, you know, the bands that we idolize, you know, that we recognize as being at the forefront of all the different genres of metal, you know, and there's so many different genres of metal that are out there today. You know, which I'm sure blows your mind, and you probably blow a gasket thinking of, you know, what the hell is with all these different genres of metal, man? Metal is metal. Rock and roll is rock and roll, you know? But, uh. Well, I, I like it. I mean, uh, you know, there, there's so many. Uh, the, the, the palette which with musicians uh, have now to paint metal songs with is a much wider palette. Than yeah, you. no joke, right? You have, you have bands that are as wide ranging as, you know, um, Cannibal Corpse, and then on the other end you have sort of Nightwish, or whatever, and you have everything else in between. Right. Um, you've got you've got this hard rock with with a groove in it, which kind of, and you have that southern sludge kind of thing going on. There's a little bit of everything, and 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 at the top of their game, all each band and those, all the bands at the top of those genres are fantastic bands. I mean, right. They're all right. Great at what they do. Right. So it's just it gives you more choice. It's more stuff to listen to. Uh, Unfortunately, it's taken up more room in my vault. But you know, yeah, no, yeah. But, uh, well, l but let me ask you this: there's a lot of stuff to listen to today, uh, and and the thing about it is, is like you gotta sort, you can't keep reinventing the wheel. You gotta sort of do something a little different. And a lot of the new bands are brave enough to try something a little bit different. Let's, right. let's do this. So let's do this kind of melody, and let's let's blend these riffs. And sure. Let's, you know, let's come up with something that's you know maybe nobody else has done before. Sure. So, well, Alec, that, that kind well, of new enthusiasm is. Without a doubt. Now, Alex, let me ask you this, man. Just because you being who you are, having the niche that you've had up there in New York City, has there ever been any bands that have come to you over, say, the last 15 to 20 years that said, yo, Kane, thank you, because without you, without doing what you do, we never would have became what we became. I mean, have you ever had any bands giving you that kind of uh, notoriety? Well, not the entire band, but the uh, members of Twisted Sister, uh, White Zombie, and guys like that. Um, That's huge! They were, very, they were very much aware of the impact of coming to a show, and then instead of hearing 20 minutes of a guitar player on stage warming up, um, listening to a metal DJ kick some serious ass, Right. Uh, it's a whole different atmosphere right um, you know you go to a show now and you hear sound checks you, you, there's, there's five bands you have five sound checks sure. uh, and some garbage that, that's like gobbling in the background you can't even tell what the hell it is <laughs> you know you, you, put, you put a DJ in there right um, but, and, and he, he, suddenly the whole atmosphere is different you're, you're being turned on to brand new music or you're hearing something that you really dig that you know one of your favorite bands comes on uh, and then right after that something brand new comes on or something very, very old comes on. So you're being entertained in a very different way rather than just standing around and, 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 and listening to the sound man go, okay, bass drum now. Okay, that's snare drum. Right. Plop, 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 you know, and then, uh -huh. and then the guitar player standing there for a half hour, you know, trying to show off. Uh-huh, uh-huh, you know, yeah. Until it's time for them to go on. So it's, a, it's a whole different 
sort of way of enjoying a show. And uh, really, it's a thing in the past now. I mean, uh, you know, people like me are an endangered species. I mean, the, the, the nobody left. Well, you know what? I'm glad you brought that up, Alex, because that is a perfect segue into what I want to go into right now. I mean, you know, you bringing yourself up as that endangered species because I would refer to you as a unicorn. <laughs> Honest to God, man, you were like the heavy metal unicorn because, again, without you, there's so many uh, people out there in the audience, so many people that like revere these bands that they never even would have known about if it weren't for you. And Club Lamour had this amazing run in New York City. I mean, literally, you, and you wrote the book on it. You wrote the book on it that, uh, you know, it's this club that introduced so many heavy metal hard rock bands to the masses and uh you know obviously it ran its course and now club lamore is no more but you have residencies now which are still very very prominent um you know with bb king's blues club and you're there at the stone pony and stage 48 talk to me a little yeah, bit about that transition like, like what what that. what happened what led the, I guess, other places. yeah. Well, what the led to the, the demise of, uh, of 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 Lamore versus all the venues that you're playing at now, and and do you foresee maybe any of that repeating itself? I don't know. I just, I think the scene is too too um, well. It's, it's not cohesive. It's not as cohesive as it used to be. I mean, Why? I mean, what happened? The scene was a very cohesive scene. It, to, to now, it's sort of disconnected. It, Scattered about all over the place. Well, dude, you're the man. I mean, you're the guy that's going to keep this thing together. I mean, you're the band aid. So, what the heck happened? Well, uh, progress. I mean, you know, change happened. Uh, all right. Know, it's, just, uh, it, it's very difficult to keep a club open um, that that is just solely a rock club. I mean, okay. It's, it's, you get the high powered bands that come in throughout the year, and then what do you do in between? I mean, the, the, the locals. Most of the time, and, and most of the locals are great bands, but they just don't have the firepower to keep a club open. Okay. They don't, they don't have, they, they don't draw enough people for you to pay the electricity bill. So it's uh, so it's talent. I mean, are you telling me that it's just it's straight up talent that keeps these clubs like Lamore in its heyday was going, and you know things like today with the Stone Pony that I was at recently uh, with the Deftones. Yeah. Um, you know, and obviously you got BB Kings that you're at and Stage 40 at. I mean, you know, it's the talent that really drives the success of the venue. Yeah, I, I think it's partly the talent, and there's, there's a few other things involved. Um, the venue has to be a place that people want to go to. Okay. Uh, people enjoy being at. Uh, they have a good experience while they're there. Okay. Uh, sound system is very important. If you don't have a kick ass sound system, you might as well just retire. Okay. So, you know, a big stage, big lights, you know, concert hall sort of quality standard. Gotcha. But uh, equipment is, is extremely important. And uh, people want to feel like they get, you know, got more bang for their buck when they, they pay $25 to, to see a show. Um, they expect to get more than $25 worth. And uh, the clubs that are alive today are able to deliver that no matter what genre they're doing. If they're doing a dance club. Uh, dance night one night, or doing rock one night, or doing country on the third night. Right. Uh, they consistently deliver a, a good experience. Sure. Uh, it's very very hard for a, a club to stay in the same vein. All right. Uh, these days, you have to sort of be diverse and, and book a lot of different talent. All right. All right. Well, I mean, that's that's words of wisdom from you. Now, let me ask you this, because again, um, you know, and I've seen interviews that you've done in the past, and just all the work that you've done live particularly with Lamore, um, do you ever foresee a venue being able to replicate the level of success that a club Lamore had with, say, DJ Alex Kane, you know, at the helm, uh, doing what they did? Do you foresee, again, you know, being able to have that type of existence occur once again, or do you kind of feel that that's a thing of the past? You know, it's, it's hard to say because Lamont grew up at the same time heavy metal did. Right. And so, the, whatever new club happens to come into existence or already be in existence, and a certain type of genre or, or flavor of music right. comes through their doors okay. in its infancy, and the crowd is able to nurture it, uh, and the DJs there are able to 
nurture it and, and, and help make it grow. Right. And the owners and the booking agents are willing to grow the business right. uh, and grow that sort of genre. Um, because back then it was really, you know, metal was underground. I mean, no, sure. 1981, 1982, nobody knew who the fuck Judith Priest was. It was revolutionary. It was I a revolutionary made, style, yeah. I mean, there were a handful of bands that were big. You had Scorpion, you had Black Stabber, you had Van Halen, you know, back in 1980, plenty of stuff to play, but... Right. Uh, the new wave of British heavy metal guys were pretty much underground at that point. Sure. And, uh, really, it was really a grassroots sort of movement. I mean, um, the, the 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 big four guys, and like Metallica, guys like that, like Slayer, uh, from the San Francisco Bay Area, were very popular in the San Francisco Bay. But outside of San Francisco Bay, nobody knew who they were. And when they when they finally got into the pilot into a station wagon, grabbed the roadie, and went on the road for you know, like fifty cents in their pockets. Which is really how they started. No um, joke. Wow. They, they, you know, we, 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 we were able to bring those guys to the East Coast, and 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 they brought that whole Bay Area thrash thing with them. That's and amazing. They brought the whole moshing thing. That is with amazing. Them to the East Coast, you know, uh, an old stage diving thing. Wow. So we were very fortunate to be able to present those guys uh, when they were very small, and then. Help nurture that whole scene, and, and, and they and then they started to grow. Uh, Mega Force Records, who was there, you know, John Z was a local Jersey guy, and the, the old Bridge uh, Metal Militia Foundation people were also very uh, instrumental in um, helping create the scene. They they gave those guys a place to stay, um, as opposed to staying in hotel rooms. They were like, yeah, hey, you guys can sleep at our house, you know, kind of thing. That's Crying amazing. Couch. That's they wild. Had a Metallica and Slayer over their house, and, and they were drinking <laughs> and writing songs and all kinds of stuff, playing in the basement. That's it was crazy. A very organic thing. And then they sent them on their way with a couple hundred dollars in their pockets and a couple of guitars, and sent them on their way to the next show. And that's the way it went for a couple of years and, until the whole thing just sort of exploded like a bomb. I mean, by the time 1984 rolled around, uh, you know, everybody and their mother was into metal. I think they released 30 or 40 metal albums in 1984 alone. That are all blockbusters. Right, right. You know, and, uh, and you discovered so many of them. So, I mean, Alex, let me ask you, man. I mean, from then to now, what do you see as some of the, the biggest uh, evolutionary changes in the music industry and in the genre itself? Like, how have you seen some of these bands change, evolve, because you saw all the bands that influenced everyone that's out there now. So I guess what are some of your thoughts as a guy who was there from the very beginning, bringing these guys to New York City from the West Coast? What are some of the thoughts that you have personally over how that genre of metal music has evolved? I think what happened in the very early 80s, and you know, there was only really one direction for heavy metal to go. It was going to get harder, it was going to get faster, it was going to get more brutal, it was going to get more violent, it was going right. to get more... It, I mean, it, it, was, it, it, didn't, it wasn't going to get softer. I mean, that's, there was no logic in that. Sure. The only the logical way for this genre to progress was to get more aggressive and faster and louder and sicker and everybody trying to out, out Satan and out-sick everybody else. Right, right. You know, do the thing. And I mean, that, that, it, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, that's, you know, they spawned a lot of great bands. Um, right. As far as like you know the changes that happened o over the years, um, we'll use like say Metallica as an example. I mean, those guys they get a lot of hate for the Black Album. Um, uh, See, I love the Black the Album, dude. I thought the Black <laughs> Album was one of the best albums they did. I think it was the I, last I, I, I good album that they, they did. They, they resolved that they weren't going anywhere. I mean, the '90s had come around, and, and the Red Hot Chili Peppers and Pearl Jam and Fate No More and Soundgarden. Right, and, all of those, and Pearl Jam and Alice in Chains and all of those guys that just stomped onto the scene in their shorts and their cargo boots. Right, uh, right. And their flannel shirts that just shoved <laughs> them all along. You just summed it up, man. <laughs> you just <laughs> like, summed it up. That's so funny, dude. That's awesome. Taiketo and Giant and Hardline and guys like that. And, uh, oh, Spider man. And, uh, Tall Stories and, and all these really great bands. Right. Um, lost in that shuffle and they there was really not a lot they could do about it they just kind of sort of disappeared quietly disappeared and, but there were a couple of bands that that refused to surrender and metallica was one of them. Metallica right. resolved that they weren't fucking going anywhere right 
Um, and, and here's an album that that just you know punched right through the '90s, and it was one of the biggest selling metal records probably ever. I guess I don't know. I don't. I don't keep records on stuff. But uh, yeah, you're the vinyl man. You're and, the vinyl man. Pantera. Um, yeah, and they get a lot of hate for being like you know like a, a hairspray band back in the day, but. You know, they was, if you listen to the album, they were pretty damn good for a history band. And then they figured out who they were at right. some point. And, uh, you know, bands, musicians, uh, individually, and bands collectively, uh, at some point have a moment of clarity about sure. what they want to do, how they want to do it, and which direction they're going to go. And a lot of times, either that lasts for a few years, or it changes from album to album, depending on the band. Right. Uh, and some bands are very content putting out very different pieces of music. Um, and and they don't really care much about losing fans along the way, or because at the same time they pick up new fans along the way. So it's 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 one of those things that is up to the individual musicians how they want to change and how they want to develop and, and which way they want to go. Right. Uh, really, sort of dictates what the future holds. Uh, you know, and so you know, and then you have Metallica coming back now with the whole hardwired thing, so they're going sure. back to their roots. You know, and, and it, that you know, it, you know, when when you're that big, you, you're going to get haters, and you're, you're going to get people who like you. Right. Um, right. You, you, you just you just got to do what you do, and, and people like it, they like it. But I, but I think I can't answer that. You shut up. You talking change, to Siri? What are you doing talking to Siri right now, man? She's trying to distract me from you. <laughs> <laughs> No, but you but, know what? You know what? That's a good segue, Alex, because uh, you know, for for all the fans out there, you know, that are watching Rock Titan Television, that are uh, you know tuning into today's age of heavy metal, hard rock, and whatever they perceive it to be, I, where can people uh, you know come out and check out what you're all about, what you bring to the table? Why does anybody today want to go check out DJ Alex King? Well, because if you come and listen to my shows, you're going to hear stuff that you're going to be listening to a couple of years from now. Ah, that's what I'm talking about. That's why. That's the difference. And the difference is, like I said before, you know, you hear some really good music, and you can come up and make a request, and I play requests. Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not, you know, some kind of hoity-toity snot. I'll play any kind of request anybody wants, as long as it fits into the night. There you go. Uh, and uh, so, you know, you want to hear your favorite song, you want to hear your favorite bands, and I'm there to, to help that make that happen. I mean, when you boil down what I do to its basics, there you go. I, I make people happy. There you I, go. So, in I, in terms of making people happy, I mean, let, let's uh, you know, on a finishing note, from the legendary DJ Alex Kane out of New York City, you know, what are some of the bands that you think are on the uptick right now? Who are some of the bands that you're spinning that you think people should be paying attention to right now? Well, you know, there's a couple of good bands that come to mind. Um, spinning, been spinning a lot of Blackwater Rising. They're Brooklyn Boys, and they, right. they play rock the way it's supposed to be played. Um, I'm a big fan of Cobra and the Lotus. I'm sure a lot of people know who they are by now. Okay. Brand new track out. Um, that's really good. Um, Rival Sons. Uh, very good band. They, they, they're, they're really a good mesh of hard rock and groove. Uh, if you understand groove, you'll, you'll really dig uh, what the Rival Sons are doing. Okay. Um, yeah, and then there's, you know, there are a lot of other bands um, that I play that are sort of underground uh, that aren't even signed. But, you know, those, that's, well, uh, that's what we're all about, man. It's all about the independent scene, <laughs> you know, man. I mean, well, I mean, because let's face it. I mean, and you know this as well as I do. I mean, in terms of what the record labels were at one time versus what they are now. I mean, because of technology, there's not a whole lot of money in selling records anymore. You know, I mean, everything's all about touring now. Everything is, well, really about just that. So you know, that being said. The underground is where it's at. That indie scene is where it's at. And there's no one more in tune to it than DJ Alex Kane. So, I mean, talk to us, man. I mean, in terms of the indie scene, who are some of these bands that maybe you feel aren't getting the recognition that they deserve? This is a great time to give them a shout, man. Well, there's a lot of them. I mean, there's, you know, there's bands like Paul Bearer and uh, Yo and uh, Bat. Right. Uh, they 
guys that have been around for a long time that don't get a lot of recognition. Well, guys there you go. Or, That's it. That's what it's all about. Sanctuary has been around a long time. And all everyone right. deserves a lot of credit. All great right. Great band. Bye. Uh, Symphony X is a great band. Uh, Bye. Overkill has been in the trenches slugging it out all these years. And, right. And, uh, you know, like they're, they're, Overkill is great, man. Yeah, they're awesome. They have where they are, but, but the thing is, you know, it's like you got to give those guys props because they, they, they're just, you know, they never stop doing what they do. And, right. and people go, oh, well, you know, this album it sounds like they're on a treadmill. Well, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right. You know, if, if you're playing great music, you know, what's wrong with more of the same? I mean, I, I don't know. Sure. Sure. So for people out there, they have like their, you know, their opinions about it. But you know, it's like if I like a band, I I want their first ten albums to sound like the first album. Yeah. (laughs) No, I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. So for people out there that want the DJ Alex Kane experience, where should people be going? Where should people be looking to go out and, uh, man? Have a great time. Get familiar with uh, some of the greatest metal acts that they don't even know about right now, man. Where do people yeah, need to go? A lot of, uh, I'm doing a little bit of the old stuff and the new stuff. I'm doing the Sabaton show upstate New York with uh, Leaves Eyes and Battle nice. Beast. Three great bands and other bands that deserve some respect and some attention. All right. Sabaton's great guys. And, yeah. Uh, and so uh, Leaves Eyes, Battle Beast, those are two great, great outfits. They really... They really know how to steamroll. Right. Uh, doing that show at the Upstate Concert Hall April 23rd. And so that's the newest stuff. And then the oldest stuff is um, Y&T April 24th, Loudness April 25th, both at BB King's. Nice. So I try to, you know, try to do shows that are a mix of the new stuff plus the old 80s metal guys that are still out there playing. Very cool. Uh, so it's a little bit of both. So whatever you're into, if you're into the new stuff, come check out Sabaton in, in Clifton Park, New York. All right. uh, if you're an old an '80s metal fan, we have Y&T Loudness. We have Richie Coxon coming in May. We have Mr. Big on June 10th. And all all these shows are BB Kings. Okay. All right. So uh, BB Kings is that's your spot, man. That's where you're chilling. Yeah. You just go. You can check out my website at uh, djalexkane.com. All the show schedules right there on the main page. All right. Uh, I have guest lists. Um, I have discount tickets. If you want to get on a guest list, it's really uh, good to ask me very early as soon as the show is announced. Um, anybody can come onto the guest list. You don't have to be a friend of mine. You can just, if you want to come to the you show. You can be a friend of mine. Be a friend yeah. of Rock Titan TV, Scotty J's, you know. Because I'm a schmuck. Yeah, you don't save people a few bucks and they have a good time. And, you know, <laughs> that's a lot of money, you know. The city is a lot of money. They charge you, they charge you for water. Nice, <laughs> nice, nice. Well, Alex... Thank you so much, man. So, Rock Titan fans, make sure you go check out DJ Alex Kane. He's at BB Kings. He's at Stage 48. And, uh, man, I mean, the guy's a legend. If you want to know some of the greatest bands that are coming out today, he's the guy that's going to educate you. He's DJ Alex Kane's the guy that's going to bring you into the loop. So, Alex, once yeah, again, yeah, man. That's partly true. You know, there's, there's a lot partly of, true. It's entirely true. There's fans out there that are doing their own digging and, 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 and like, you know, doing We got to do the homework for them, man. People are lazy, man. Everyone's lazy now, man. We got all these millennials. We got all these little entitlement mongers and everything like that. I mean, you're the guy, you know, you're, you're, you're the one digging down in the trenches, man. You're the one that's educating and illuminating everybody and what they should be listening to. So, everybody, again, Go check out DJ Alex Kane because he's the one that's going to make sure that you know what's going on in the world of hard rock and heavy metal, man. That's it. Plain and simple. At the very least, you'll hear a really good set of music. There you go. There you go. All right. (laughs) Alex, I appreciate it, man. Thank you so much, dude. It's a pleasure to be on Rock Titan TV. Hey, man. You got it. You got it. Later on. See you next time.